I don't want to play you Scrabble, Daddy. Gil, just trying to keep you company. That's so. You know I got a broken leg and it itches and I can't keep my mind on the words. That way you figure you can beat me. <laughs> oh, that's not true, Daddy. Okay, I'm sorry I said it. I could beat you before you had a bus to me. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Go play with your sister. I'm not going all the way to Aunt Laura's house in Philadelphia just for that. Oh, I forgot. Answer the door. Hi, Uncle Benny. Hi, Rusty. And how are you today, my poor little broken bird? <laughs> what do you want? It's not what I want, it's what you want, oh great white father. You called a rehearsal for today. I did. I changed my mind. Well, it suits me. I've been wanting to stop for a steam bath anyway. My pores haven't been open for weeks. <laughs> this may come as a big emotional shock to you, but I'm not interested in your pores. Open or closed? Closed, I can understand, but you've never seen them open, so you're just guessing. Now <laughs> look, Dad, if you're not going to rehearse, I'll hippity hop to the Luxor baths. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who said I wasn't going to rehearse? You did. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Well, what are you so happy about, laughing boy? <laughs> wipe that miserable look off your face, will you? Uh, uh, better yet, I'll wipe it off for you. Dan, have I got a great booking for you? Wait like that. Booking? You nuts or something? I can't play a club for a couple months yet. Who's talking about a club? This is a one-nighter, a big birthday party in Texas. Me play a birthday party? Who do you think you're talking to? What, have I slipped so much I can't play a nightclub anymore? A birthday party you want me to play? Why, because I limp a little? This is no ordinary birthday party. It's for one of them Texas millionaires. <coughs> and judging by the money you're getting, there'll probably be a thousand people there. This is more money you get for one night than you get for a whole week at the Copa. Is that so? Well, I don't want it. Some agent I got books me at birthday parties. What do you got lined up for next week? A gas station or a supermarket? <laughs> <laughs> don't knock it. They pay very well today. <laughs> Whoosh. <laughs> Whoosh. <laughs> Benny, I think your valve is leaking. Why don't you go have a fix? <laughs> That's not a valve. It's the clarion call of the steam room. Whoosh. All right, push it out, will you? I'm busy. <laughs> Dan, look at that. Will you look at me, please? I'm looking at you. I looked at you long enough. Why do you think I took this booking? Because you're a rotten agent. Besides that. Because you need the 10%. Besides that. What do I know? What is this, a guessing game? I'm not playing guessing games. They specifically asked for you. Yeah, yeah, well. Look, forget they asked you. I did forget it. Now, Dan, I tell you, you need this date. Now, you're a performer, a guy who's used to big audiences, laughs, lots of excitement. A guy like you can't just shut himself out. You're, you're driving yourself crazy, your friends, even your family. Danny, believe me, I tell you, you need this date in Texas. I can't work. I'm crippled. I'm a sick man. Oh, will you stop feeling sorry for yourself for the love of Mike? Your own doctor recommends this date. He says it's a, a badly needed therapy. The doctor says it's good for my health? No, his health. You've been driving him crazy, too. <laughs> According to you, I'm driving everybody crazy. No, not everybody. I understand there's a hermit in upstate New York you haven't yelled. <laughs> my yelling bothers you so much, maybe I ought to do you a big fat favor and get another agent. Yeah, I can get an agent who doesn't mind putting up with a bad-tempered invalid. I could answer that, but uh, I'll wait till you get back from Texas, huh? Because, Dan, when you get back from Texas playing to one of those great big audiences of, of great big laughing Texans, you're going to love the whole great big human race again, including me. What made you a member of the human race? <laughs> Didn't you hear? A vacancy opened up last week when you resigned to become a monster. <laughs> Funny fella. <laughs> You don't have to wait for me to come back to Texas because I'm not going to Texas. No, you're not, huh? No, I'm not, huh? You know something? Maybe you do need a new agent. Here. Why don't you call the McDonald office? They're a great big outfit. They've been dying to handle you for years. If you think they can do a better job for you than I can, go ahead. Be my guest. Call them. Well, you think I'm bluffing? 
<laughs> Look, kid, I don't care if you're bluffing or not. Here are the tickets. The plane leaves in less than three hours. If you're not going to be on it, do what you want. If you don't feel that I'm your friend as well as your agent, and after all these years of handling your business affairs, if you don't trust me well enough to follow my advice, and if you don't honestly believe that I know what's best for you, then call the McDonald office. If that's all you want as just an agent, you couldn't pick a better one. Hello, Luxor steam bath. <laughs> this is Danny Williams. When Benny Lacey gets there, tell him to keep his pores closed and get packed. We'll leave him for Texas. <laughs> Probably bigger than New York City. Mister, this ranch is just a hair shy of being as big as New York State. Daddy, did you, did you see all those corrals full of horses? Yeah, I saw the corrals full of horses. Can I go riding? Can I? Come on, stop it. You've never ridden before. Maybe I can get a horse that never had a rider before. <laughs> and we both beginners. You're so clever. You've been spending too much time with him. That's what's the matter with you. <laughs> now, we'll fix him up with calico. Gentle as a newborn cat. Oh, boy! I don't know. We'll see about it, but don't get excited. Well, come on out and back. I'll show you where you're going to bunk. Just a minute. Just a minute. What do you mean, come out and back? You'll show me where I'm going to bunk. <laughs> Aren't we bunking in this house? <laughs> well, I know. I just brought you up here first in case Miss Enright wanted to see you. Uh, she ain't around here now. Uh, uh, none of the hired help ever stays in the main house. <laughs> none of the what help? The hired help. Well, who says I'm hired help? She's paying you, ain't she? Yeah, she's paying me. Well, then, according to her, you're hired help. <laughs> Is that so? You know, we didn't come all the way from New York to be insulted. We could have stayed home and been insulted. <laughs> Where is Mrs. Enright? I'd like to talk to her. I don't know. You don't know. Well, send for her, please. I'd like to talk to her. All right. Send for me. I'm here. You Miss Enright? Yes. I'm Danny Williams. I know. Well, this uh, hired hand of yours there has got his signals all across. <laughs> he, he says that I'm supposed to sleep in the bunkhouse in the back. All my hired help sleep in the bunkhouse in the back. <laughs> Look, Miss Senrod, I don't care how much money you're paying me. I will not be treated as hired help. Not that I got anything against hired help, but I happen to be an entertainer. Now we'll be treated as a guest here, or the whole deal is off. Oh, Daddy, please don't quit. I want to stay. This ranch is keen. I don't care how keen it is. It's a matter of principle. It's a matter of principle with me, too. When I pay a total stranger for a job of work, he ain't staying under the same roof with me. I reserve that for my kin folk and ladies. Besides, I don't know what you're getting all upset about. That bunkhouse is brand new. I think it'd be a lot happier for all of us if you told uh, Gargantua there to drive us back to the airport. <laughs> Mr. Williams, when a man quits me for no good reason, I got no cause to be neighborly. I hope you got that crutch broke in real good, because it's a mighty long walk to that highway. <laughs> You ain't scaring me. I'll get to that highway if I have to crawl. Oh, Daddy, please, let's stay. I want to ride calico like I'm sorry, Buck sweetheart. Said. You know your daddy. Once I say something, it's it. That's it. There's no court of appeals. I'm not going to change my mind. Well, you better get started. And in a few days, when we see the buzzards, I'll be glad to send my men out and give you all a decent burial. <laughs> <laughs> buzzards? Burial? What are you talking about? In a water hole in 30 miles. Nothing but dry grass, cactus, and rattlesnakes. <laughs> Rat 
rattlesnake? <laughs> Big 12 button diamond bag. Oh, Daddy, please, can't we stay? Oh, how this kid talks me into things. <laughs> Right, sure, son. Let's go. Be careful now. <laughs> well, I, I guess I can take this clan bake long enough till the show is over. I sure hope the rest of the audience isn't as tough as you are. What rest of the audience? The audience I'm going to entertain at the party. I'm the audience. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean the whole audience. I'm the whole audience. <laughs> What are you talking about? You heard me. This birthday party is for me and nobody else. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm getting paid more money for one night here than I get for a whole week in a nightclub. And you mean to tell me you're the only one in the whole audience? That's right. I never invite people to my parties. I don't like them and they don't like me. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me. He must have been weaned on lizard milk. <laughs> oh, bury me not on the lone prairie. I don't like the buzzers, and I hope they don't like me. <laughs> Why don't you stop with the silly songs? Let's figure out a way to get out of here. We've got to get to that main highway. Daddy, Buck said I can ride Calico now, can I? No, I don't want you to ride Calico now or ever. Why not? Because I don't want any favors from Mrs. Enright. Well, gee whiz, I'm riding Calico. I'm not riding Mrs. Enright. Well, it's her horse, isn't it? You mean I got to hate her horse, too? Yeah. Couldn't I ride it first and hate it later? Get out of here! Come on, some brand the cabs or something. Go on! There's some way we can get to that highway. Oh, she wouldn't give us any transportation. Oh, come on. All we gotta do is start walking. I guarantee you she'll send that station wagon out after us. I mean, nobody could be so heartless as to send three humans out in the, the parish in that hot, scorching desert. You're right. She couldn't be that cold-blooded. Nobody could. Certainly not. She's just bluffing, that's all. I'm gonna go tell her we're leaving. Wait a minute. What, what if she isn't bluffing? That's a chance we'll have to take. Many's a time I've sat down to a dinner of roast fowl. I never knew that someday a fowl would sit down and have a dinner of roast bennies. <laughs> you know, those bullets had to be molded separately. Then they had to load them and put in the powder, jam it down, and then cock the hammer before they could shoot it. Boy, no wonder why Herb never shoots anybody. He doesn't want to take the time to load his gun. <laughs> you know, you're a funny little character. No, something you're a lot like my father. He barks a lot, but he never bites. Well, I don't bark. Well, you growl quite a bit. I do? Well, I never noticed it. Well, I guess you don't always growl. Well, I'm glad of that. Daddy says you'll honk like an old duck. <laughs> Who cares what he says? He's leaving and good riddance. Gee, we just got here and already we're leaving. And I told the kids I'd be a real cowboy before we got back to New York. You don't look much like a real cowboy in them city duds. Sure don't. Hey, you're just about the right side. Come over here. Wow! Get back, boy, and give me some moving room. Here, you're leaving. I'm going to give this to you. Try it on. You know, that belonged to a mighty important person. Who? Petey Enright. Who's Petey Enright? Well, he was my son. He was a soldier in the army. Gee, where's he now? Just a memory now. He never came back. That's why there's nobody to run the ranch except me. Well, that's hard work for a girl. Girl? That's the nicest compliment I've had in four years. Here, take these. They're hand tooled. There's nothing finer. Oh, boy, they're neat. I bet you're going to like these. Oh, boy, shaps. Sure you want me to have all these things? It'd make me very happy if you'd take them. Well, I don't like to make people unhappy. <laughs> 
Come on. Get your things. We're getting out of here. Well, look at all this stuff Mrs. Enright gave me. Well, that's nice. Give them back to her and let's go. Now, just hold on a minute. I gave that stuff to him, not you. You needn't punish him with the way you feel. Look, if he wants an outfit like that, I can buy it for him. He doesn't have to wear anybody's cast-offs. These aren't cast-offs. They belong to a very important person. Yeah? Who? Wild Bill Hickok? No, Petey Enright. Who's Petey Enright? Her son. Well, let her give him back to her son, then. Come on. She can't give him back to her son. He's just a memory. Oh. I'm sorry. You don't have to be sorry for me. Nobody has to. Okay, I'm not sorry. Come on. Let's <laughs> make her happy if I kept them. All right, you can keep them. Thanks, Daddy. And thank you, Mrs. Enright. I'm sure sorry I won't be here at your birthday and you'll have to be all alone. Mm, I've been all alone before. I'm used to it. She wouldn't be all alone if her son was running the ranch. But he was a soldier in the war, and now he's just a memory. She's got nobody left, and she's going to have to be all alone on her birthday. You think, Daddy, it's no fun to be all alone on your birthday. All right, I got the picture. I got the picture. <laughs> doesn't have to be alone on her birthday. We'll, we'll, we'll stay in... Entertainer. Oh, no, you won't. I wouldn't have you now. <laughs> Rusty, uh, pick up those shoes. Wait for me outside, will you, son? Daddy, everybody should have a party on their birthday. All right, sweetheart. I told you. I got the message. All right. <laughs> Look, Miss Enright, I, I don't know why, why you sent for me and try this thing because you're not going to have any fun. I mean, you just, you're not the type to have any fun. Why do you want to, why do you want to go and try to put on a party just for you? Because this birthday party isn't for me and you mind your own business. Well, if it's not for you, who's it for? I said to mind your own business. You said you were going to be the only one at the party. And now it's for somebody else. Well, who's to somebody else? Oh, never mind. Forget it. I'd like to forget it. I sure would like to forget it. But just tell me one thing. My agent claims that you specifically asked for me. Out of 30 zillion entertainers in our country, you asked for me, Danny Williams. Why? Because you were the last one that was with him, that's why. I was the last one that was with him? With who? What are you talking about? You recognize that picture? That's my son, Petey. That's the last picture he's ever taken of him. You recognize that fella standing next to him? That's me. That picture was taken of the Volturna River in Italy, remember? Yeah, I remember entertaining the 34th Division there, but there were a, a thousand PDs, and they took a thousand pictures. I, I don't remember this. I... Well, it was the night of Petey's birthday, and the boys in the outfit gave him a big cake. That was the night you entertained him there. Petey wrote me this letter and said it was the greatest birthday he ever had. Well, I got to reading this letter again, and his birthday was coming up, and I, well, I... Well, you said you were leaving. Why don't you get? Because I don't want to get. It's Petey's birthday, and I'm going to entertain at his party. But just like I entertained the last time, with an audience. So let's round up the neighbors and have a party. Are you going to get off of my ranch, or am I going to have to run you off? Guess you're gonna have to run me off. Look, I don't want to come here in the first place. The only reason I came is because of this busted leg of mine. The last couple of months, I've been, I've been feeling sorry for myself, acting like I'm the only guy in the world ever had a broken leg, making life miserable for my kids and my family, everybody around me. And my agent convinced me that what I needed was to get out again and get out in front of people, to hear laughter, to hear applause, to play for a real audience. So what happens? I find an audience of one person 
Doing exactly what I was doing. Yeah, feeling sorry for yourself. Wallowing in self-pity. Acting like you're the only woman in the world ever lost a son in a war. I know it's a terrible tragedy. But that was a long time ago. You can't go on grieving and hating the world for the rest of your life. Not natural. It's not what Petey would want either. Buck! Buck! I'm gonna have my man Buck take you and your son and your bald-headed piano player and load him in that station wagon and drive you off of my ranch. You got me, Sen Wright? Uh, just a minute. That's the way you want it, Mrs. Enright, I'll leave. But since you paid for the entertainment, the least I can do is tell you one story. I'm supposed to be a pretty good storyteller. But this is a true story. It's a story about a woman who, who lost her son, just like you lost yours. And she grieved for that boy, like you've been grieving for yours. Then one night she had a dream. She dreamed that she saw her son and a lot of other folks climbing a steep hill, carrying heavy sacks on their shoulders. And her son was carrying the heaviest sack of all. And she ran up to him and she said, Son, son, why did they make you carry such a heavy sack? And he said, Ma, these sacks are filled with the tears that are shed for us. You want to know something? That woman never grieved for her son again. What was it you wanted, ma'am? I want you to take that fella and his son and that bald-headed piano player, and I want you to load them in that station wagon and round up all the neighbors. Is that right? We're gonna have a birthday party. <laughs> Good old Texas earth. 